Here with us now is trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris. Misty, great to see you. This case, though, very disturbing. I want to talk to you about these additional allegations. Murder, cannibalism, torture. What is it going to do for the legal case against Huberman? And what would the district attorney need to do from here with these allegations? Well, this was an attorney who represents the victim's families. And so it's a different perspective, what we're hearing in this press conference. And to me, Hannah, it was actually quite shocking that not only was he making allegations relating to cannibalism and, and all of these other shocking areas, but he's also specifically talking about linking Rex Hewerman's family and specifically his daughter to the crimes. Now, that is being done without anything more than just information that he had ripped from the internet, searches and postings of artwork uh, and, and other materials. So there's nothing actually from an evidentiary perspective that does make that link or leads to those conclusions. So the district attorney, there is a task force on this case. They have made very, very clear that the family at this point is not being looked at as being involved. It says it in every single filing. The family was not involved. And in fact, Rex Huerman's modus operandi was to commit these crimes when they were out of town. So this was a really, really big statement without a lot of actual evidence to back it up. And prosecutors have said, I mean, they said it immediately that they don't believe humans' families involved. But there are so many allegations around Victoria, like you mentioned, just from her social media presence. Could social media posts tie a potential suspect to serious charges like murder and cannibalism? Not without more. So what we saw was was basically artwork and postings relating to uh, other other types of things in the public sphere. And some of it was her own artwork and others was artwork that she was posting that was actually uh, created by others. So sure, could that link somebody? Yes, but not without more, not just because somebody is interested in uh, some type of artwork or writings or readings or anything like that. So certainly if there was more to that, like we see with Rex Hurman himself, think about what is in that affidavit. They're talking about he's interested in serial killers. They found two books, uh, including a book relating to the criminal minds of serial killers and how that actually interrelates to the crimes. And they're linking a document that he created to the actual crimes and the way that the bodies were found. So that's completely different than looking at somebody's social media presence and saying, well, if they posted something about a TV show, uh, specifically the show Hannibal, well, then they must ultimately be a cannibal. That is a huge leap yeah. and quite frankly, kind of a dangerous assumption to make. I'm with you here. So we're also seeing new photos of Hurman at a gun club. The reason that's so important, according to attorneys, is that where that's where two bodies were found. But why is this important to the prosecution's case? This is incredibly important because not only is it where these bodies were found in Manorville, but it also has a timestamp. And it's putting Rex Hewerman in that area around the times they believe the bodies were deposited. This is specifically relating to Jessica Taylor, who he has now been charged with her murder. So that timestamp is yet another piece of evidence that's going to link Rex Hewerman directly to the bodies. Because keep in mind, Hannah, there is forensic evidence in this case. We know that there were hairs that were collected off uh, of some of the victims that are linking Rex Hewerman or other family members through this theory called transference. However, Forensics are going to be challenged ultimately because this, these cases are so old. And so there's obviously going to be, from a defense perspective, you're going to get an expert in who's going to try and undercut that. So anything else that can link Rex Hewerman to the manner means giving him opportunity to commit the crime, that timestamp, incredibly important. Missy, I'm running out of time. I want to get this question in. The amount of evidence, information we're learning on this case is staggering. It seems like there's always new information coming out. Do you think there could be more charges in this case as we move forward? I do, and here's why. Specifically, that document that was found on Rex Hurman's computer mm -hmm. in his basement was created in the year 2000 to 2002. In that document, there were references to what to do different next time. We have one body from 1993, and then we have seven years in between. So that is a look back period that prosecutors and the task force are absolutely going to be looking into. Because if you're saying use stronger rope, the, the lighter rope snaps too easily, 
Well, that means you've experimented with it before. And so that 10 year period that we did not know was not previously implicated is going to be front and center for the tax force moving forward. Ms. Maris, always enjoy our discussions and of course the insight you provide. Thank you so much and we will be right Thank back. Thank you.